All right, we're going to do the GP injection today. What we're going to do is find the foramen first. Do you see how the syringe is ready to go in my right hand? I'm palpating and I'm starting from the first molar area. The location is going to be where the vertical and the horizontal planes of the palate meet. So I'm just going to start feeling back until I feel it springy and there it is. It's a little springier there. Uh, you don't want to be back into the soft palate. You can see the line for her soft palate right here. So her foramen is actually pretty close. I don't know if the color will pick it up, but you can kind of see kind of a purpler look right here over the foramen. So now I've got my site. It's usually around the second molar area, sometimes by the first molar, right where the planes of the vertical and the horizontal meet. Do you see how I'm holding the Q-tip? You don't want to go in like this and then block your entry. So I like to go in with my thumb on top. And I'm going to go straight into the site, and I'm going to hold that pressure there for at least one minute. Two is actually even better. Normally, I would have the topical on this Q-tip, but I wanted for visibility, I didn't put it on this tip Q-tip. But she had topical earlier. And I'm going to actually watch the clock. You need to do this for at least one minute. And remember, uh, the structures that the GP is going to anesthetize are the periosteum and the tissue on all the posterior teeth. Premolars and molars. And the landmarks are the vertical and the horizontal planes of the palate and the second molar. And the purple springy spot, <laughs> purple or gray springy spot. Okay, so I'm doing the pressure anesthesia. I'm pushing pretty hard. And it's been about a minute, so I am going to sneak in. Try to get the drip off. Sneak in. And I'm about a centimeter away. I'm going to move over, and I'm going to go in where the Q-tip was, and I'm going to keep the pressure. I like to add a little drop. I'm going to aspirate. It's negative. Give a few drops. Wait five seconds. And then you're going to go in. I'm already there on her. She's shallow. I'm going to aspirate. It's negative. I'm going to slowly deposit. Once I know that the anesthetic is probably taking a little effect and it's more comfortable for the patient, sometimes I'll remove the Q-tip and then I can steady that. And remember, the dose is going to be decided by the blanching that you're seeing. Now, I'm using plain mepivacaine for the patient's sake, but and you can still see some blanching with the plain mepivacaine. However, if you're using lidocaine, the blanching is going to be even more, and it's going to start to spread. But I'm going to go ahead and come out because she doesn't really need to be numb. But if I was actually using lidocaine, you'd want the blanching to be a good size, about the size of a nickel. All right. And the dose, though, is usually about a third to a fourth of a carpial. All right. Let's get her some suction. Good job.